Well, it's time to bring it on home, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I'll start it the way I usually do. This is the Washington County Public Affairs Forum. And that's a forum created by the public spirited members of the community who've uh, united over the last year since 1956 to bring um, uh, information of interest to voters and the public in the area. Um, we're going to be having um, a board meeting after and today we're going to have the West Side Economic folks speaking to us. But before I go further, let me just, since we're chatting, indicate that the board meeting will be um, dealing with the review of the bylaws to make them more modern, which allows us flexibility in where we actually have the meetings and when. And also, we're going to be dealing with venue um, for all the folks that just have not been preparing or listening for the last few months. Spaghetti Factory is a larger venue that we're able to actually support during the non-campaign seasons. During the um, campaign um, general election and primary elections, we have pretty much a full house, but on the off, off period of times, like what we're dealing with right now, even though we have a special district elections, we don't have um, the ten, uh, number of folks coming in we usually do. We're working at the Pepper Mill in, in Aloha, which is a smaller capacity place. It can hold up to 60. Um, but 30, like we have here today, doesn't look small in it. Um, obviously, we'll have to see what we do in the primary election, but th that's what we're thinking about. So the Public Affairs Forum, again, is um, all year, we, we, start, we got ourselves going back again financially. We got the membership list and things of that nature reconstituted. But the West Side Economic Alliance, to a certain extent, has uh, been our successor in terms of impact. When I was on the board originally, almost all the state of the states, state of the county, state of the city, all the important stuff was done here, but the growth of the chambers and some of the alternative things has sort of relegated the forum to a lesser status in the community so far as a, a microphone for, um, for issues. And that's what the board's been struggling with all year and into the, and into the next year. Uh, so in any event, this time, um, I'd like you to introduce the um, executive director of the uh, West Side Economic Alliance. And she's going to speak to us. I don't provide detailed uh, bios of speakers because I think that's what they can do themselves more adequately than I can do. And also, it's embarrassing to read the canned prose as people claim to climb the mountains in Nepal, have masters from um, Harvard, and divinity degrees from Cambridge. So at least I'm not vouching for the um, bios I'm asked to read. So come on up. I want to make sure that you can hear me. Well, I'm not sure if uh, Westside Economic Alliance is the successor, but it's nice to be a partner with the Public Affairs uh, Group of Washington County. And I think it's this, this type of opportunity to talk to you about what we do at Westside Economic Alliance is, is really golden to me. I think it's it, we, we get things done in Washington County because we're a collaborative group of people. And I don't think that there's any other way to, to look at it. If you, if you contrast the different counties that we exist in here in the Portland metropolitan area, it's really clear to see that in Washington County we have, we have citizens who care, we have elected officials who uh, work hard and run for the right reasons, and we have associations, uh, we have your association, we have Westside Economic Alliance, we have the Chambers, that all provide the information that our citizens need to hear to interact. So whether you're attending a forum that's held by the elected officials on education or on business, they're always well attended and they're always interesting questions and a, you know, a lively debate. But it's that type of environment that makes Washington County uh, the great place that it is. And the fact that I have the opportunity to to be the new executive director of Westside Economic Alliance is, is a real treat for me. As I look around the room, we have, I, I have lots of people I don't know yet, but I would like to meet. And then I have other old friends that have been members, and I have work partners and 
board partners and all types of folks here, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, as I start out, I want to make sure that I thank you for allowing me to be here and inviting me to be here. I'm sorry that Kathy couldn't, Kathy Stanton couldn't be here, and I wish her the best. I know she's dealing with a family emergency in California, so when you see her next, please extend to her my best wishes. I started as the Executive Director of Westside Economic Alliance in December of this year. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and then I'm going to talk a lot more about the Alliance. And at the end of this, you know, I should probably ask you the question enough about me. What do you think about me? But I, I'll try not, <laughs> try not to. Um, there's, there's a lot to Westside Economic Alliance and in its history. Coming in in December, there's, uh, it was, it's been fast and furious. Teresa Dunham and I worked together along with Mary Quinn. And uh, as you well know, Jonathan Schleter was the executive director previously. He's now over at Washington County as the um, uh, government affairs manager. What you may not know is that Jonathan was on my board of directors when I was the executive director of regional partners. So behind the scenes, there's a lot of um, talking and a lot of sharing of information which has made our transition work pretty smoothly. And I have a lot of respect for Jonathan, but I can tell you right now that I will not be able to quote to you the numbers, facts, and figures that that man can. And a, a little part of me is kind of proud that I can't, but <laughs> just don't tell him I said that. When I get to the part of the presentation today about the good news and the bad news of Washington County, I think you'll hear Jonathan's voice in the background because I did ask him for, for quite a bit of information there. So here's a few reasons why I am suited for this job. I was born and raised in this area in Portland, in the Portland area. I lived out in East County as a young girl. I grew up and uh, lived, in Washington, lived in Washington County for the past 15 years. I'm educated in Oregon. I went to Park Rose High School. I went to Oregon State University for two years. I graduated from, go Beavers, graduated from uh, Portland State University and I did my master's degree at, at Lewis and Clark. My husband, same thing, born and raised, went to Lincoln High School, went to the University of Oregon, go Ducks. And we have two children. I have one daughter who is a, a, an alum of the University of Oregon, and our son is an alum of Columbia University in New York. Bottom line is, I have to tell you that I am a duck. And the reason, and I'm proud to say that, the reason I'm a duck is that you cannot live in my household and not be a duck. So that's very simple. That, And I'm only a duck on uh, Civil War days exclusively. On the rest of the days, I am a beaver and a duck. So, the, I graduated in education. By training, I'm a health and PE teacher, and my master's degree is in exercise physiology, so go figure. You know, how, how do you end a career, or, or be at the end of your career with all the changes? It's kind of an interesting road. But strength and stamina are my hallmarks. There's no question about that. And um, let's see, just as a Washington County history, after teaching, I opened the, along with three other people, we opened the Metro YMCA that was on Barber Boulevard, the big green building. From there I went to work for St. Vincent Hospital. And at St. Vincent Hospital here we started the first wellness program. And in 1984, that wellness program called Wellness Works, which is still working there, uh, won the Governor's Award. So I'm proud to have a history in Washington County as well. After. Uh, St. Vincent's Hospital, I worked for Pacific Power for 21 years. So that's where I really got, you know, dyed in the wool corporate exposure and, and experience, um, learned about business, learned about regulation, worked with people like my friend Mark Freiberg from PGE. Uh, Pacific Power is interesting in that we only have 65,000 uh, customers in the Portland metropolitan area, and the majority of the customers are in the more rural areas whereas PGE has the majority of their customers in the more metropolitan area. So when I left Pacific Power, I retired as the Vice President of Oregon External Affairs, which gave me a lot of background in public affairs, government affairs, and um, also in economic development. So I retired thinking, okay, this life is good, you know, it was like 2006, 2005, pre-recession, everything was, everything was good. 
And I was asked to head up uh, an organization called Regional Partners, Portland Vancouver, Portland, Vancouver Regional Partners for Economic Development. So it was Judy Johansson, our former CEO, that uh, encouraged me to get involved in that, and I did, and had a wonderful time working with many of the economic developers that I work with here today. And in fact, in Hillsborough, in Beaverton, in Sherwood, we have some of the finest economic development folks around. And it's no, it, it's no just chance that Washington County has become the economic engine. We've had incredible people with that are pedigrees that we, you know are just amazing that have led the way in developing Rondler Acres, in bringing in the large companies that uh, have come to this area, not just in Hillsborough. In Beaverton, the folks there work on infill and making sure that they can build the smaller business businesses along the way. They focused on economic gardening. So We've done a lot. We've got Sherwood that just is welcoming Walmart. That was just recently announced. So these people are people that Washington County can respect and be very proud of. So after, after leaving regional partners, oh, and by the way, through my experience at Pacific Power and at regional partners, I lived through and survived four mergers. So have any of you here been through a merger? You know what it's like. I mean, you, 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 you just can't believe that there's actually going to be another day of this. But you do survive, and you move forward, and you learn that change is your friend. Change is always going to be your partner, whether it's in your raising of children, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in your, your family life, or if it's in your work. It's change is there, and if you can't embrace the change, you better go. <laughs> that's, that's the way I look at it. So, Bottom line is I have a strong passion for the economic success of our area. And when I say that, I really mean our entire metropolitan region. But when you're out here, when you're a partner in Washington County, you can't help but feel like you're really with the winning crowd. And that's, that's an important piece, and it's a fun piece. So I'm, I'm honored to be the executive director of Westside Economic Alliance, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with folks that I work with. So, enough about me on this. Now we're going to talk about me in relationship to Washington, or to Westside Economic Alliance. Um, we, I mentioned uh, Jonathan Schleter and the fact that Jonathan and I have had the opportunity to, to work closely together. Westside, Jonathan left in August, August, September. So Teresa and Mary Quinn basically held down the fort for several months and you know, it's, it's not an easy process to go through an executive director search. It's not an easy process to go through those types of changes. So when I came in on in December, we had a lot to do. We had a lot to do to learn each other. We had a lot to do to learn what our priorities were. And we started out, you know, by having a board retreat. We've got a great board of directors. And we said, okay, it's time to establish what our strategic direction is going to be. It's time to say we've got a new executive director. We've got some new ideas. Let's see. Let's see what we're made of here, and see if we can we can move forward. So we held our strategic uh, planning session. It was one of those days that we have here in Portland, where you don't know if anyone will be able to get off the mountain, up the valley, over the hills, because it was snow was predicted. You know, and you just those are the days you think, why why is it? You know, every single day I go to work, and there's no problem. But the day that you have a big event, you know, you've, got, you've got an issue. But we all made it there. Uh, Lois Dittmars, who is Peter Court, comes from, I, I think, one of the highest elevation spots in Washington County. She made it in. We had all sorts of folks come in. So it was great. We had about 80% of our board members there. And during that, during that session, it was a session where we all agreed this is an important organization. We need to have a strategic plan. We need to have a strategic direction. And we need to feel anchored in what we do and move ourselves forward along with our partners and making sure along the way that we are partnered strongly with those that we, that we work with. So the board developed, and I'll read it to you at the end of uh, my little presentation here. Uh, they renewed the mission statement. They renewed the, the commitment. The board stepped up and the board has participated in different committees. 
We actually started uh, two new committees. We have now four committees, transportation, which many of you are familiar with and have probably participated with, our land use and housing committee, but we have a new committee called government relations, and that committee works closely with our elected officials, locally, regionally, at the state level, and also at the federal level. So this is, this is new. Westside Economic Alliance, we are an advocacy organization. We're classified as a nonprofit C6 organization, but we had, um, we, uh, I think it's fair to say that the way we advocated was not in a collective manner with um, a large committee and a committee that was made up of uh, business heads from different organizations. So now we've got quite a bit of power in this government relations group, uh, and it's, it's moving forward well. And I'll, I'll be talking about the details there, but those, the last committee that we formed was the membership committee. If you're going to run a membership organization, my feeling is you better damn well know what your members want, and you better damn well serve it to them, or else you're not going to be a business. And that's basically where we are. Forgive me if I've offended anybody. I won't swear again. But, yeah, oh darn. But I guess the point is that for me, I am, I'm strongly committed, and I know Teresa and Mary and our board is committed to saying, we want you as members. We want to be engaged with the key people that are making decisions in Washington County, but we also want to be able to serve to you what you need to have. And that's, that's our goal. So uh, the membership committee is really focused around member value and making sure that the members get what they need to get. So take a step back, the transportation committee. We have month, and when, I, when I'm talking about these things, I really want you to be thinking, ah, maybe I fit in here, maybe I fit in here, because we would love to have the interaction with, with our communities. So be, please be thinking about those things. We have monthly meetings that are focused on transportation issues. We work closely with our key partners. Uh, we work with TriMet closely. Our transportation chair is Frank Angelo, Angelo Planning Group. Frank went to the um, most recent TriMet board meeting that was held out here in Hillsboro last, last month, I believe, and uh, spoke about the West Side Enhancement Program, Transportation Enhancement Program, and we tipped our hat and said, thank you for the work that you're doing. We appreciate it, and keep doing it, and do more. The other thing that we're interested in is making sure that we are focused on TriMet and making sure that the payroll tax that, that funds TriMet stays within reason for our large employers in this area. So there's, you know, we're, we're partnering with TriMet and at the same time we're telling TriMet what it is that we need to get from them. The committee works closely with the government relations group and we provide feedback back and forth whether it's to inform the regional transportation plan that uh, Metro puts together or whatever it might be. So when we have communities, uh, for example, we heard from Tualatin. Tualatin wanted us to send a letter in to Metro about an amendment to the regional transportation plan allowing for an egress issue. We talk about it in government relations, we give a head nod and we write the letter and it goes off. So we're, we're working cooperatively with all of our, all of our communities. We have our Land Use and Housing Committee. That is chaired by Mimi Dukas. Mimi is from Stonebridge Homes. She used to be with Cardno, and she's now with, like I said, Stonebridge Homes. She's also the Vice Chair of the Beaverton Planning Council. Planning Commission, excuse me. Well, you couldn't ask for a better chair. You know, she's great. She brings a lot of interest, a lot of focus. The Land Use Committee was really, really busy this last year when they were looking at the um, UGB issues that we faced out in Washington County. There was a lot of activity. We're in a little bit slower time now, so we, we have the opportunity to take some long-range views of issues. For example, we had Metro come out and talk about the Urban Growth Report. And how do they get, how do you, how do you get the numbers that go into the decisions you make? You know, can you, let us know the, the inside workings. And so we had a presentation from them that gave us some heads up about what we can expect down the road, how we can communicate with Metro. By the way, I'm going to take a side, side step just for a moment here. Um, Westside Economic Alliance and Metro have had their issues over urban growth uh, boundaries, some different things that we don't always agree about. But 
we do have a positive relationship with them. When I was hired early on, I asked uh, President Hughes, who is somebody I've worked with for a long time, if he would, uh, if I could use a quote from him in, the, in my press release. And the reason was I wanted to demonstrate early that we are going to work collaboratively with, with Metro. That doesn't mean that when we disagree, we won't, we won't point that out, but it, it means that we will work together. We're looking right now at working at ways to increase the activity level with Metro with our membership. So, so that when we get down to the tougher issues, we have relationships built and we have positions staked that we're, are no surprise and we can work together smoothly. So with the land use and housing group, we have a lot of, a lot of feedback from Metro and we have a lot of interaction with them. We also heard about the Aloha Refill plan from, you know, I knew Eric would like that, I put a plug in, and, and they did mention the library, by the way, so I wanted you to, and congratulations on that. So we are, we're working with them, we're working with others. Uh, with the Land Use and Housing Committee, one of the biggest issues that we are going to face in the, in the future, when I say future, I mean 10, 15, 20, 30 years out, is infrastructure. How are we going to deal with development? How are we going to make ourselves ready for development without breaking the bank, so to speak? The Land Use and Housing Committee is going to be working with the Home Builders Association to put on an infrastructure symposium. And we're, we're, we're going to try to get a bunch of smart people together, a bunch of people with differing views, with thoughts that you know, may not always agree, but come together with, for a dialogue about what we need to do and how are we going to do it. Won't be the, it's going to be the first dialogue, but I can assure you it won't be the last. This is going to be a long, a long process. But by partnering with the Home Builders Association, with Metro, we set the stage so that we can make change incremental and positive for, as, for, the, for the majority of the people that we're, with, that we're working with and the groups that we're working with. So I talked a little bit about our Government Relations Committee. I told you it was a new committee. It's headed by Ed Trumpke. Ed is a senior attorney with, and a partner with Jordan Ramos. Ed has a lot of experience and is a great guy to work with. Uh, when he took the job, he said it was interim, and I'm no longer using the interim term. I, I, I'm not sure if he's noticed or not, but I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting to be called out on it. So we meet on an as-needed basis for, with the government relations team. Mark Freiberg is a part of that group. But when you're in session, as-needed meets fairly frequently. So we've been meeting at least every other week. This morning we had our second legislator event. We have uh, what we call a legislator reception. We bring in legislators from the Washington County and Western Clackamas County area to talk about key issues. The first. The first uh, reception, we had tables designated and we talked about transportation, we talked about health care reform, we talked about PERS, and we talked about uh, industrial lands. This session, the idea was that the legislators had the opportunity to tell the business community, what do we need to know? What would you tell us? What heads up would you give us about the issues that you're facing in Salem? It was, it was a good group this morning. We had about 40 people there, and uh, the first time we had about 50, this time we had about 40, and the, the talks were pretty intense. It was very interesting to watch Senator Starr and Senator Devlin interact, and there was a wink and a nod several times, which indicated that to me and to other uh, you know, insiders, I guess, not that I'm an insider, but that, that there's work going on behind the curtain that the Dems and the, the, the Ds and the Rs are getting together on some key issues. So our members, when you go back to that value proposition, our members have the opportunity to, to be involved and to see that happening and to watch Senator Devlin give the mic to uh, Senator Sarr and say, you know, what are your thoughts on this first? You go first. And, I'm, and they're very supportive back and forth. They talked about, Senator Devlin talked about, the eight-person caucus that was uh, discussed in the newspaper last week, and it was very interesting to, to, hear, to hear that. So, so we're trying to create more dialogue. We're trying to work on making sure that our members have the opportunity to influence, we have the opportunity to influence, and that our legislators have, have the opportunity to hear us. The government relations team uh, 
puts together testimony. I testified last week on West Haven Island. We have uh, put together letters that we put together letters of support for Tualatin Valley Water District on their decision that came up. And they were very kind and let me speak to them. So it was, they've done a lot of hard work. It's just incredible the amount of work that went into the decision to take water from the Midland. So my hat is off to you, Marilyn, and to your team. So thank you for that. Going back to this morning just for a minute, I, told, I didn't tell you who was there. We had Senator Devlin, we had Senator Starr, we had Representative Unger, we had Chair Dyke there, we had Commissioner Roy Rogers there, we had uh, Commissioner Paul Savas from Clackamas County, we had Mayor Ogden Mayor from uh, Tualatin, Mayor John Cook from uh, Tigard, although he and uh, his council person, Chris Ann Clark, were engaged in some pretty heavy discussions in the hallway for a while, so more, more to follow on that. See, it's always interesting to watch what's going on in the side rooms, too. And uh, am I missing somebody? Oh, did I say not? I didn't say Chair Dyke? I'm sorry. And Chair Dyke was there, who has been a great supporter of uh, Westside Economic Alliance, and we, you know, we, we want to support Washington County as well. So it was a good group, and there was a lot of good discussion. We also, that group also uh, hosted a breakfast forum for us in February, and it was a legislative update forum that uh, focused on the legislative agenda for Clackamas County and the legislative agenda for Washington County. Well, it was kind of the first time that uh, we'd seen the Clackamas County folks come out. So uh, Chair Ludlow was there, uh, Tootie Smith, Commissioner Tootie Smith was there, and we had uh, Chair Dyke there. Just about the entire commission was there, I think, from Washington County. But it was really interesting. Jonathan we gave an overview of the legislative agenda and Gary Schmidt, our legislative agenda for Washington County. Gary Schmidt from Clackamas County gave their legislative agenda. But then the fun part was that John Ludlow, Chair Ludlow, stood up and talked and took some questions. And then Chair Dyke did. So it, you know, it, on the surface, it all looked really nice and friendly, but you know, as you read the papers and, you, and you, you see what's going on, it gives you more and more insight. So that's, again, what we try to provide is that insight and the critical information that all of our members need as they make their business decisions and they move forward. So our, our Government Relations Committee is active. They're new, but they're active. And the last committee we formed was the Membership Committee. It is chaired by David Bennett. David Bennett is a partner with Landy uh, Bennett Blumstein, Dean. <laughs> I can never get that right. And uh, the reason he chaired the committee is that Mayor Denny Doyle gave him five dollars. So <laughs> we were having a little trouble finding a chair, and uh, Denny Doyle handed him five dollars and said, "If you do this, I'll give you this." And he and uh, David Bennett has not let Mayor Doyle forget that. So again, like I like I mentioned earlier, the purpose of that committee is to really create member value. We're trying to build our membership, we're trying to grow our membership so we can do more and more things. But at the same time, as I, I told you, I believe strongly that we need to make sure we understand what the product is that we deliver and if we're delivering it in a fashion that our, that our members want. So that's the purpose of the membership committee. We've got, we had a, an event week before last in Beaverton and it was, a, it was a great event at Mingo. It was a beautiful night. It was the same night that um, Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici had her um, op new op office opening. And, uh, but we served wine, so we got a few more people probably. <laughs> but anyway, the purpose of the, purpose of the event was interesting. It was Beaver the city of Beaverton wanted to really say we are open for business and not only are we open for business and want to help you do your business but we want to introduce you to the people that you'll do business here we want we want the engineers here we want the economic development people here we want the mayor here we want the director of economic development here so you can directly ask your questions as our Member Chair says, you, know, you won't get any favors, but at least you'll get their business card and a handshake. So, And it, it worked out very, very well. We were really pleased. We're looking at doing the same type of membership activity with the city of uh, Tualatin next and the city of Tiger. So we've got a lot of things on, on the agenda. We're also planning an annual meeting for our members, and uh, that should be a fun event in the uh, late part of the year. 
So when I'm talking about it, events and activities, what is it that we do? You, you, you probably have seen these. We've also got some flyers in case you'd like to attend anything that's coming up. But to give you kind of a, a little brief history, this year in January, we had breakfast forum with um, Mayor Charlie Hales. Now, Mayor Hales came out, and it was the first time that a mayor, that the mayor of Portland has come to speak. It was, it was incredible. I mean, it was, when you think about how odd that is. Now, now, since I said that publicly in January, I think I understand the situation maybe a little differently. I think that uh, Mayor Bear Katz really didn't want to come out so much. Tom Potter probably didn't want to come out so much. I don't think Mayor Adams was invited. <laughs> but that, and that's probably why he didn't come. But anyway, it was the first time the mayor had come out. So, and it was well received, and uh, it's it was it was great to see Mayor Hills get engaged. He talked about being engaged with the mayors from all of our communities as well as the communities on the east side. So there's an engagement level in the city of Portland that we haven't seen for a while. It remains to be seen how he does, but. Uh, you know, you read the Oregonian just like I do, and it looks like things are moving along positively there. And, and we will we'll enjoy hearing from him again in the future. In February, we had the legislative update that I mentioned earlier. In March, we had our first legislative reception that I talked about. In April, we hosted, along with Nike, the State of the County address by Chair Dyke, and that was, uh, we had like 200 people there. It was a great event. We also hosted a breakfast forum on health care reform. That breakfast forum, um, it was interesting. I was worried about it. I just didn't know how it would go. And you know, sometimes things just work out well. And in that, in that situation, we had four of our members there. We had Providence, we had Legacy, we had Tuality Healthcare, and we had Kaiser Permanente. But within that group, we had providers, in other words, the hospitals and those that represent the doctors, and we had the insuring, the insurers, and it was a really nice dialogue. I learned a lot. I think the group learned a lot, and it was it was very very interesting. So that was I think very successful. We had our member event with the city of Beaverton. We had our second legislator reception this morning, and now looking to the future, we've got um, Michael Jordan coming on. And this is not the basketball player, Michael Jordan, but. It's someone that's near and dear to our hearts in Oregon. He is the chief operating officer, if you will, of Oregon. Played that role at Metro and has really inst instituted some changes in our state. So while we're all listening to what and, and trying to participate and influence what's happening at the legislature, I think it's also important to know what's who's running the place and what's going on in the background. And Michael is, uh, I think he'll be great at giving us an update there. So we're looking forward to having him on May 23rd, is that right? May 23rd. And then in June, we are having another breakfast forum, and this one is called, well, I've just named it recently, News and Views About Water. So Teresa doesn't even know that, but it's a gig named it. It's really her job to do that. But the, the issue is that we're gonna highlight the decision that was made at, at Tualatin Valley Water District and talk about what the impacts of that are. Talk about why do we need this? What is the population growth going to be? Why do we need to be taking water out of the mid Willamette? And what is our what do our businesses look like? You know, we, we turn on the faucet, take a shower, wash our hands, turn it on at work, and everything works fine, but you don't think about what happens at Intel when they turn on the faucet, or Maxim when they turn on the faucet. It's a whole different ballgame. And collectively, all of us, when we turn on the faucet, it's a, it's a big deal. So my hat, as I mentioned in my testimony, is really off to the water, the, the board and the work that they've done. And this is our opportunity to really ask questions and to understand what the impact is going to be, both in terms of delivery systems, how it's going to work, and what it's going to mean in our pocketbooks. I mean, we've got to pay for this too. So that's another, I think it's going to be a very interesting form. In um, uh, July, we have our golf tournament. And our golf tournament is very, very popular. And you know, I golf and I play on you know, my hack. But uh, it's really interesting. I when I when I took this job, you know, I listened politely to. There's a golf tournament. And there's this. 
What I didn't realize is how successful this has been for how many years, Teresa? 27. 27 years. The foursomes right now are sold out. The sponsorships are almost sold out. And people are, are gearing up for fun already. I mean, they're having like pre events. There's going to be pre functions for the next few weekends, I'm certain. So it's like going to a duck game. <laughs> and so it's, it, we're excited about that. And in August, we hope to have uh, Senator Wyden come. We try to get a uh, federal representative in the summer when they're uh, in recess so that we have a perspective on what's happening in Washington. So, so we've got, you know, we've got our work cut out for us and we've got a couple others, other uh, events coming up in the, um, in the fall. So in a long nutshell, sorry, that is West Side Economic Alliance. That's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. And I think it's important that when I talk to our partners like the Public Affairs Forum, that you understand that and you can help share our message as well as we can help share your message. So now this is the time that I kind of turn into Jonathan a little bit. Just, just a little, just a little. So what I'm going to talk about is Washington County. And the title of this, and this will, you, this will sound like Jonathan, Where Oregonians Get to Work. That's, that's, so I'm going to talk about a good news, bad news story. And then after that, I'd like to entertain some questions and maybe some, instead of questions, I don't know all the answers and I don't pretend to, but I do like to have the questions asked and we can have the dialogue. And I'm sure that there are many people around the room that can answer the questions as, as much as I can. But anyway, let's start out. The good news about growth in Washington County is we are the fastest growing county in Oregon with one in every four of the new residents of our state. So we have one in every four residents coming to Washington County and we have one in five of the private sector jobs come to Washington County. The bad news about growth in Washington County is that there's already a serious shortage of developable industrial land for future economic development opportunities. And when the UGB was expanded, we talked about that. This area, the Portland metropolitan area, only got 335 acres, and that's out in North Hillsboro. So, so we, you know, we, we've got lots of opportunity coming our way. You, you read about Project Azalea, you read about all different sorts of things, but we really have to understand and, and be, be cognizant of how we're going to deal with our growth. So the good news about our, demo, our demographics is that the residents of Washington County tend to be younger and better educated than the residents of our neighboring Oregon counties. Jonathan also used to like to say that they're better looking, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> uh, but you do know, and you probably saw in the Oregonian last week, that I think this is fascinating, especially being an ex-teacher, that there, there were 27 National Merit Scholars from Oregon. Ten of those came from Washington County. And ten of the and those ten were all in the zip code 97229. If I had a kid right now, man, I'd move into 97229 so fast. <laughs> I, I don't know if that guarantees National Merit Scholar, but it's but the, the point is that this county is is um, the education base is strong here. And we do we, we are committed. And satellite uh, I, I didn't talk, I'm going to take just a step back here for a moment, in relationship to gov government relations, we are a private public organization. We do not endorse candidates because of that, but we do look at measures. And when there is no conflict between you know, our, our membership, I mean, for example, when, they, when we were looking at 99W, you know, Wilsonville had one view of it and uh, Twelve had another view, so we kind of stayed clear of that one. But we did endorse the Beaverton School Levy. We had the Beaverton School District Chair come and talk to our board, and we did move forward with that. Metro was at the same meeting and talked about the Parks Levy, and we, we remain neutral on that, on that levy. But the point is that we believe in education. OK, so I mentioned that we, the good news is that we've got well-educated um, individuals in our, in our county. The bad news is that one in 10 residents of Washington County is over the age of 60. Now, I know that I count as one of those one in 10, so I don't know if anybody else in the room does, but I do. <laughs> and this number is expected to double in the next 15 years. And along with this aging population comes with their, the new demands for housing, health services, transportation, and public transit services that we need to be thinking about and we need to be addressing. 
Okay, so the good news about our unemployment is, and by the way, we have uh, the demographic sheet that's available for you if you'd like to take a look at it. It's got all sorts of numbers on it. It's, that was one of Jonathan's favorites. But anyway, we have it here for you today. The unemployment rate in Washington County is 6.9%. It's among the lowest in the state, and in our state we average 8.2%, and it's also below the national jobless average of 7.6%. Our unemployment rate is also below the unemployment rates of neighboring Clackamas and Multnomah counties, which are at about 7.5%. And this information is of last month in April. The bad news, though, is that we still have more than 20,000 neighbors and constituents in Washington County who are unable to find work, support themselves and their family, and to contribute to the economic recovery. So we still have that issue to deal with, and we do a good job of dealing with with it through some of our organizations, but we need to continue support, supporting groups like Vision Action Network and others. The good news about our, about our employment figure is Washington County's employment numbers are the highest on four and a half years with just over a quarter of a million people currently working here. That's a lot of people working here, but remember, we pull in people from all different counties around us too. But again, the bad news is that one in 10 residents of Washington County are currently living, one in 10, below the federal poverty index. One in seven has no health insurance. One in eight depends on federal food stamps or emergency food pantries to meet their basic nutritional needs and the needs of their families. Okay, the good news about Washington County's strength is that since 1960, the population, you know, these numbers, okay, 1960, that was what? Uh, 40, 50, 53 years ago, right? The, the population has grown sixfold. That's six times. The number of jobs, though, has grown faster than the population. We've evolved from a resource based economy and a bedroom community to this, for the state's largest city to become what is referred to, as I mentioned earlier, and it's not just Jonathan and business leaders out here that are saying it, it's the economic engine. I mean, there's legislators from Coos Bay that are saying that. There, it's, we're recognized as being the economic engine for the state. As a result, more than 1,000, 1,000, more than 100,000 workers each day commute from homes in 10 neighboring counties to job sites here in Washington County, and the number's growing. So from 10 counties, that's pretty amazing when you think about some of those communities. But that shows you the, the priority of a job. I mean, we all, we all know what that means. Now the good news about manufacturing is that we're, we've always been an exporting state. We ship products around the world and we have done so for 160 years. Uh, thanks to this success it, of many of our companies, Washington County is currently home to one in four manufacturing jobs in the state. and that's. We have 44,100 manufacturing jobs out of 173,000. So that's, that's, that's good news. But when you look at that, what does that mean for transportation? Let's talk about bad news for just a minute. Yeah. Manufacturers depend on efficient transportation systems to deliver their products to customers and to distribution centers around the world, and we're not able to keep pace with these demands. We, you, don't, you don't have to go very far, and we don't have to travel very far to know what our uh, transportation constraints are. There are at least 105 companies in Washington County that are currently shipping containerized freight through the marine terminals operated by the Port of Portland. 105, just in our area. We get these numbers, by the way, from the Metropolitan Export Initiative that's been, um, they've been working in Portland. And so I'm really confident in the numbers. It's just amazing to me. There are many others that are shipping to customers at shipping points north of the Columbia River. This requires a new and larger bridge across the Columbia River and more efficient transportation delivery systems throughout our region. And it, this morning, interestingly, Senator Starr brought up the issue of the Columbia River crossing. And the discussion at his table was around what's next? What, you know, what we're waiting, obviously, on pins and needles for the state of Washington make, to make their decision. What if they don't agree with this? What if they don't move forward? Where do we go next? So that conversation was starting there, and it was an interesting one. OK, the good news about uh, taxable income is that workers in Washington County earn the highest wages, enjoy the highest household incomes, and contribute the highest personal income tax per capita in the state of Oregon. 
Now this is Jonathan again. In fact, with a growing population and rising income levels, people working in Washington County have higher taxable earnings than 28 Oregon counties combined. That's, that's pretty amazing. He has a way with putting things, doesn't he? Okay, the bad news about our per capita income is the state of Oregon as a whole is lagging behind neighboring states. And the Portland metropolitan region is falling behind other leading cities in terms of household earnings and taxable incomes. And the reason that this is bad news, and it's no surprise to you, and you, know, you deal with this all the time and you're informed uh, citizens here, is that we're, we're dependent on a personal income tax. That's, that's our state, that's the way our state is, is built. So we need to make sure that we're working on our per capita income rate. So the continued good news about Washington County is that the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, ranked Washington County the highest among 328 large counties, largest counties in the nation. And workers here, and you probably heard this statistic already, took home 8.5% higher earnings in the second quarter of 2012 as they did the previous year in 2011. So that's a big increase for you know, over a year. The better news is that Washington County is now among only 60 counties nationwide in which workers earn an average of more than $1,000 per week. With average in, our average income is $1,122 per week. Workers in Washington County are earning as much as the folks that live in uh, Marin County, you know, that little place with all the money just by Golden Gate Bridge there. And the best news of all is that the Bureau of Labor Statistics ranked Washington County among the top 100 counties in the nation in terms of annual job growth, approaching 2.5% this last year. We also have our continued expansions that we are welcoming, and those are by our leading companies, Intel, Kaiser Permanente, Nike, and others. It's not just the big people, it's, it's all the little people, it's all that supply chain, it's everybody that gets in here to, to make sure that um, everyone's successful. So, um, the, all of those, like I said, all of the expansions it support all sorts of businesses, from the bistros to the construction companies. So, in closing, I'd like to read you our mission statement and um, hold me to it, please, as we move forward in our partnership. Uh, Westside Economic Alliance is a member based, nonprofit association that advocates for a healthy economic climate on the west side of Portland metropolitan region. The Alliance plays a leading role in the development of this high growth region by providing a business perspective in public forums and facilitating the cooperation between the private and public sectors. The result is a unique partnership that benefits both businesses and the communities of our region. So thank you for inviting me today. I had a nice time presenting all about us. So questions? Public Affairs of Birmingham allows questions, but there are members only succinct, short and sweet questions. All of the questions can be held sequentially with the person behind you. So um, short, sweet, succinct, respectful questions, and I'll open it up. I just want you to know that I took your license plate numbers down in the, in the parking lot, so I know who you are. You wrote mine twice. <laughs> Chris last my former member. I understand economic development. Would you say there's a larger percentage of nonprofits or profits in this county and compared to Portland, where I understand they have over like 700 nonprofit businesses? And what do you uh, stand on that? About nonprofits. Well, well, first of all, we are a nonprofit ourselves. I know. Just that out. <laughs> I know, and you pay yourself very nicely. I hope. Ooh. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I'm not starving. Thank you very much. Um, as far as nonprofits and for-profit business goes, I think that I I think it's really important when you're looking at the balance between nonprofits and for-profits to recognize what the purpose is and and what the, what purpose that non nonprofit serves, so that you're looking at making sure that the services that the nonprofit profit is 
is uh, focused on are actually being received and that there is an, a, a, a reason that they're in place. And that's why when, when I talked earlier about our member value and making sure that we are producing value and we are fulfilling our mission statement, that we are, we are, um, you know, we're, we're uh, let's see, what is it, we're not, we're licensed by the state, so to speak, but we're also fulfilling what we're set up to do. So I don't see it so much as an issue of more or less of either, as long as they are focusing on what their mission is and, and providing the services that are required. And I, I really can't tell you what the breakdown is. Does anybody else have anything to add to that? By the way, like I said earlier, you know, Q&A time for me, especially in a group like this, it's much more about dialogue than it is about um, answering the questions. I'll try, but uh, it's much about dialogue. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark Frager, forum member. You mentioned infrastructure. I, my question would be, how much infrastructure are we going to need to really fulfill our mission of providing jobs up to our full potential. When I look at our road system, which still emulates an old farm-to-market system, and many other things, even if the state gave us even more developable land, don't we have a lot of work to do in, in developing that, especially uh, transportation and a few other things? Absolutely, and if I were to, if I had any courage at all, I'd say, well, Mark, you're probably with PGE one of the better people to answer that question. <laughs> The, the reality is that to attract large companies and to attract um, businesses of any size, we have to have roads, sewers, electricity, water. It all has to be there, and we have a lot of work to do. Um, and when you look at the industrial lands that are available right now, it's so limited that I think that there, throughout the state, Mark, isn't it nine sites that are available through the industrial land survey that are actually shovel ready? So the, the state as a whole is lacking the opportunity to attract the, the global companies that would like to be here because we don't have we don't have the uh, back the, the store the you know we don't have the backlog of uh, properties to do that that it's it is significant the amount of infrastructure that needs to occur and the, and the way we have to look at infrastructure in terms of being creative it's not just about building more roads it's about how do we use those roads efficiently how do we strike a balance between uh, you know, light rail, uh, active transportation, cars, moda all the different modalities. So it's, it's really a discussion that has to happen in communities and at the state level to be able to, to, to build the infrastructure that we need. But I think we start by identifying what the issues are in symposiums like we're proposing for this fall. Hi, Pam. Uh, thanks so much for being here and helping us out. John McWilliams is a board member. Uh, Pam, uh, we talked a little bit about all the businesses that are coming into Washington County, and I think it's terrific. We have some businesses that are here already, and they're using the land that um, businesses coming in want, and they're called farms, and it's a really huge industry right here in Washington County compared to the rest of the state and, and on. Uh, so it seems to me that, um, that land use plan is really a tough thing, and, and we have to talk about how we can go up instead of out. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about how um, the West City Economic Alliance looks at that? I think that's a very good question, and the, the reality is, thank you, John, the, the reality is that we value our agriculture and our, the systems here that have made Washington County the great the great county that it is. It's a good balance. And that's why we have, you know, the discussions around the urban growth boundary. How do we how do we look and, and make sure that we're addressing both sides of that? Because agriculture is a big part. Washington County is now it's not just what we used to think as agriculture, you know, beans, bees, uh, hay, that type of thing. Look at the wine industry here. It's it's tremendous value to Washington County at the tourism level and at the production level. So it's really important to balance those things and make sure that we are having those discussions and having them up front. So it's not lost on me, John, that that's important. And going up is important. We have to, we, you know, we have to look at going up. There are some businesses that can't go up. You know, we couldn't build an Intel um, without having a Ronda Acres type of type of facility. But we can create other opportunities that are more up and they, it doesn't have to be the urban sprawl that you see in other cities across the country. So it's a, it, we hold very strong values in our state and in our county 
around respecting the land, respecting the forests, and all of the pieces that make this the special place that we live. So I, you know, I hear what you're saying, and I think it's very, it's, it's absolutely critical. The other thing about Washington County that's so cool when you talk about the farmers is the uh, farm to table type of work that's going on now, and in the looking at looking at utilizing some of our agricultural um, gems locally. I mean, we, we benefit from that, so it, and it's it's part of what makes makes this place a great place to live. I um, excuse me, just a minute. I love. I'm a cyclist, and I love to ride my bike recreationally. And I'm probably one of the people that you may have honked at, and I apologize for that if I was. But nonetheless, having the opportunity to be out in our county and see the beauty of the county from that vent from that vantage point is wonderful, and it does make you appreciate what we have here. Eric. Eric Squires, Forum Curmudgeon. <laughs> oh, you promised you'd be nice. I'm going to be very nice. Uh, one of my concerns is that uh, growth doesn't pay for itself, and that seems to be a solution that is uh, put on the table in order to grow, in order to solve problems, but it still takes money to grow. I'd like to use that as a premise for my question. Uh, one of the concerns that Washington County uh, um, it has is uh, whether or not we should build a Westside Bypass. And what I'd like to know is that uh, if Westside Economic Alliance has studied the issue, and if it has, if it's rendered an opinion. And if there's no opinion, um, uh, and, the, and the WEA remains neutral, if you could share any of the discussions that you've heard, that would be great. Uh, can you tell me more? Sure, absolutely. Um, Eric is talking about the West Side Bypass you know, discussion, and there's been lots of discussion about what are some of the words that are used, the, the goblins, the ghouls, the, you know, about resurrecting West Side Bypass and all this. Uh, the reality is that we have transportation issues that need to be addressed. Uh, the West Side Bypass, in the the way we used to think of it as the, the loop from um, Highway 30 up and around and back down to I-5, that, that probably won't work, but we need to be thinking about what will work and how do we improve the, the linkages between the different pieces for transportation. How do we take some of our giant trucks off of streets that were intended as uh, back roads, not as main thoroughfares. So uh, the discussion, we've had discussions, and Mark, you know, you might want to add to this. Mark sits in our transportation committee meetings as well. We listened to uh, the city of Hillsborough. They talked to us about some of their ideas. And my understanding is that the city of Hillsborough, the, the paintbrush has kind of been painted across them as wanting the west side bypass. The reality is I, I strongly believe that the city of Hillsborough wants to improve the transportation situation the way it stands today and that and they're not just looking at a west side bypass but looking at how how do we work on all those different linkages and make it work in a manner that is feasible because right now we're not going to be building big overpasses over state par or over parkways and things like that so eric does that answer your question works for me thank you okay okay anything else marilyn <laughs> Last question. This could be a long one. <laughs> Marilyn McWilliams, excuse me, farm member. And I just wanted to ask, um, Washington County is, Washington, Clackamas County, both have a large number of unincorporated areas. And I'm wondering whether this has any impact on business at all. Do they prefer to do business at the uh, city level or the county level, or does it even make a difference? Well, I think that that depends. Thank you, Marilyn. I, and I really think that depends on the company that you're thinking about and that you're talking about. You don't have to go very far back in your memory to think about Nike and the city of Beaverton and the issues that were presented there. So for Nike, it, it might be very different than it is for another company. But as uh, the city of Beaverton moved forward and Washington County moved forward with the with Nike's announcement, there. The city of Beaverton embraced Nike, and I didn't hear the A word annexation once. So, you know, I think that you know, it would be nice, I'm sure, for the city of Beaverton to reap some of those taxes. But the point is that we're, again, in this all together. And uh, Mayor Doyle, his council, have been so supportive of Nike and the work that they're doing, and recognize that that brings jobs, that brings that anchor, large 
a world-renowned company here and keeps them here. So I, I you know, I, I, in some cases it may be beneficial for the company, and in others it may not be. So I'm... Um, Pamela Treese, thank you. Um, we actually run a television show here. We last about 58 minutes, so 58 minutes. Um, I guess if you would like to ask some questions, some questions after the program, wouldn't you? Okay, this is Washington County Public Affairs Club. This is the members, and we're basically hitting our 58 minute mark, so we're signing off. Again, John Tanner, president of the forum. We had the West Side Economic Alliance with Pamela Treese here. So. <laughs> By the way, I'm Pam to my friends. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're back. Sorry, You're back. Okay, Chris. I was telling you about an article in the Oregonian yesterday where it said uh, taxes and governments don't work well with businesses. And you weren't uh, really that knowledgeable about it, but about it seemed, it, this was by Samson. I think uh, a lot of people might know him. He said he comments, but it's the idea you can't really be taxing businesses. That doesn't work. Or uh, let's see the other idea regulating businesses. Too much of that. Where do you uh, find your economic alliance stand on that? Well, that's an interesting question. And the bottom line for me is that we want our we want our businesses to be healthy and thriving. And the reason, one of the main reasons we want that is that we want to make sure we can ensure personal income taxes that run our state continuing to flow. So, and remember, I come from 21 years in the electric industry. I'm very familiar with being highly regulated. And in that, and I, I also sit on the board of a bank here locally. So I'm very familiar with what it's like to be regulated in the banking industry. And in some cases, it's absolutely necessary. In others, I think that we need to recognize the strengths of the companies and the businesses that they represent and have some faith that they will operate within appropriate guidelines. And so, you know, I, I tend to I tend to look at uh, business growth and development as let's let the government get out of the way and let it happen and support the growth so that we all can be here together and working working strongly together. And I, I might add that the the municipalities that I've worked with and the county, everyone's been really great about looking at being pro business. I mean, I, there's no question about it. That's that was the mantra of the. Uh, membership meeting that we had or the member meeting that we had in the city of Beaverton was get to know us, we want to make this work for you. And I'd say the same thing about the, the group in the city of Hillsborough and uh, Washington County. So I, I think that that answered your question. Very good. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, thank you very much and I'll tell you that I was really nervous about this presentation. So you've made me feel very comfortable and I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.